Floods in Pakistan, glaciers collapsing, fires in Essex last summer. The overwhelming scientific opinion is this is at least partly happening because of man-made climate change. And at this summit, another desperate plea to try and keep global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees centigrade. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. Greenhouse gas emissions keep growing. Global temperatures keep rising. And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. After saying he wouldn't, Rishi Sunak has now gone to the summit and he's trying to present it as a chance to help people back home right now. At home, many people are grappling with very high energy bills as a result of Russia's illegal war. So that just highlights the need to move quickly to improve our energy security, to transition to cheaper, safer, cleaner forms of energy. And look who else is a guest at the Egyptian resort of Sharm el Sheikh. Boris Johnson had a message aimed certainly at many in his own party and maybe even at his successor. There are people who've drawn the conclusion that the whole project of net zero needs to be delayed mothballed and put on ice and you know for instance we need to reopen coal-fired power stations and frack the hell out of the the British countryside and so I believe that here at Sharm is a moment when we really have to tackle this nonsense head on. But promises are easily made. The UN Climate Secretariat says 194 countries promised to speed up action on climate change after last year's meeting but only 29 have actually done so. For activists from the developing world at the conference, it's very frustrating. What I'd love to hear from one leader uh, during this period is commitment, like urgent action. We've had promises for a number of years that have not been acted upon. So before making new promises, how about we fulfill those that we have already made? Because those are what we need. Britain has promised £11.6 billion over five years to help poorer countries cope. But is that something the country can afford now? Well, this climate scientist says slowing down global warming is vital for us as well. It is going to affect our food prices. It is going to affect the number of people that want to come to this country looking for a, a better quality of life. So it's, it is something that ends up affecting us down the line. Once again, many of the most powerful people on the planet have gathered to save it. Will they make commitments and stick to them? Or will they walk away?